And here we are once again at the physics video lecture. Fluid mechanics video lecture eight. So we made our way into potential flows and have a really nice application for that. Let's see what we had for starters. We're gonna start with Euler's equation. Grad B minus one over rho gradient P plus G. Like that. So we're starting with Euler's equation. We're going to have divergence of V is equal to zero. And we're going to look at a situation where the long linear term can be neglected. That takes us into the potential flows again. Our topic is uh, surface waves, what am I calling them? Gravity waves on the surface of an incompressible fluid. There's the incompressibility. So gravity waves on the surface of an incompressible fluid. These are just what you think they are. We have a fluid surface. Let's go ahead and call that the x direction. This is going to be the z direction. And the unperturbed fluid is for z less than zero. Right down here, fluid at z less than or equal to zero. And up here, we're going to have atmospheric pressure and if the thing is perturbed it just develops a wave I'll do a red wave okay so we're looking at this and you know I've drawn it pretty shallow the uh, argument is going to be that the wavelength the amplitude let's write this way lambda much greater than a that is to say the wavelength is much greater in the amplitude, and that's gonna fulfill the criteria we talked about the other day for neglecting this term and for having a potential flow. So we'll be able to use the potential equation on this situation, wavelength much greater than amplitude. So there's our, there's our situation. What else do we have? Um, yeah, so because of this, we have potential flow. And let's write down our ingredients here. Everything there. Yeah. So we will have, we've got L squared of P is equal to zero. The velocity is the gradient of P and the relation between the pressure dP dT plus one half rho V squared. Oh, well, actually this has to be divided by, by rho plus one half V squared plus G times, sorry, P over rho. P over rho plus G times Z, that would be incompressible fluid, thing right there, equals F of T. So here's a point where I'm gonna discuss this f of t again. First of all though, quadratic term is small as argued before, so this one goes away. Now what do we have with this unknown f of t? Remember this came from the gradient of a function vanishing, so we're left with a function of time. 
we can incorporate that, lose no generality into here by having B um, equal to or you know B tilde to give another name B plus integral P P prime P P prime. So you define B tilde like that and then its time derivative gives you this. But I'm not going to write the tilde on there. Point is is that this f of t can be incorporated into phi with no loss of generality. So f of t can be incorporated Now we have everything and we're just going to set this up and solve it. We've got d p d t equals p over o plus g times z equals zero. Right, so equals zero, we can ignore it. Um, and we just need a trial solution. So Amzots. Let's let B X Y X Z and T. X, Z, and P equal F of Z cosine KX minus omega T. <coughs> this, of course, we've worked with waves before, okay? So we'll go ahead and just grant ourselves that. It'll be a and it's a good trial solution. So now what do we have? We have d squared b dx squared plus d squared b dz squared is equal to zero. So we'll do the two derivatives with respect to z first. So we're just going to have f double prime of z cos kx minus omega t. And then the two derivatives with respect to x are going to bring k out twice. And we're also going to have a minus sign, minus from the cosine. So minus 1 f of z cos kx minus omega t equals 0. And cancel the cosine, and we end up with f double prime of z is equal to k squared f of z. That's clearly an exponential. So f of z equals, all right, f zero e to the kz plus f one e to the minus k times z, right? That's clearly a solution. And we've got this picture up here still. Since we're going to have atmosphere constant pressure above the surface of the water, the surface of the water is at z equals zero. That means that this one will grow without bound. Oh, fluid at z deep. Okay, fluid is deep. Z is, goes down and down. So that means we have to eliminate this one. And we're left with this for z less than or equal to zero. So now we have f of z is equal to f zero e to the k z z less than or equal to zero. And we'll put together our um, velocity potential and d x y and y here we don't need a y x and z and t we have the f zero e to the k z times the cosine k x minus omega t. Okay, what's water wavy about that? 
Well, we now have to go into this condition right here. Okay. And let's go ahead and write this. Now we've got the dt dt plus t over rho plus g times z is equal to zero. And we're evaluating this at the surface. And what I'm going to do is take a derivative here, d squared b dt squared. Since we're so let's, let's go ahead and write this next comma at the surface, which is z equals zero. We take this derivative, and p at the surface is just a constant. So this goes away. We have g dz dt. Okay. at z equals zero is equal to zero. This we can substitute as being v sub z, okay? Or d squared v dt squared plus g v sub z equals zero, still at the surface, but v sub z is d v dz or d squared b dt squared plus g dt dz is equal to zero at z equals zero. Okay. So this is our next function or equation to evaluate. So now what do we have? We have phi and we have this condition evaluated at z equals zero. And let's see what that gives us. This, by the way, is the solution for all of z less than or equal to zero. Um, well, I know what, yeah, let's go ahead and do this and see what it gives us, and then we'll have the situation under control. I'm going to go ahead and erase this here. time derivatives of this brings us minus omega squared and another minus sign from the differentiating the cosine. So we have this here we have minus omega squared. Okay, let's write it this way. Minus omega quantity squared. We've got another minus one f naught t kz cos kx minus omega t. So that was that one. And then plus g and d phi dz is just going to bring down um, a k. Okay. g k f naught t to the kz cos Yes. Kx minus omega t equals zero. So we can see everything's going to go away. So f naught e to the kz cos kx minus omega t. We're left with minus omega squared plus g times k is equal to zero. This is what we were looking for. It's the dispersion relation. It tells us something very interesting about these waves. So omega is equal to the root of g times k. k, of course, is 2 pi over lambda. This is the dispersion relation. The 
frequency as a function. Um, this is not the same as your ordinary linear waves. These surface waves are a bit different. Let's go ahead and analyze this briefly. So we need the concept of the group velocity of a wave that I'm just going to cite right now. So for the group velocity, speed with which a wave packet that's comprised of a number of these wavelengths, remember this is completely linear, so you can integrate up a number of these types of waves. So for the group velocity, we use this expression here, and in this case, we have, um, actually let me control that before we go on with this. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Yeah. So we've got square root of G D D K K to the one half power one half root G one over root K K to the minus one half power. So this we can do one more step on this. So V group is going to be one half root G divided by K. Now go ahead and write it this way, root G over two. And the square root of K, remember K is lambda over two, uh, two pi over lambda. So we've got the square root of lambda over 2 pi. What we're interested in is the proportionality square root of the wavelength. Okay. So what we have is a group velocity that increases with the wavelength when things like tsunamis are discussed. So waves that travel on the surface of the ocean with enormous speed, the reason is is that they can have an enormous wavelength, so the speed can be considerable. Say the wavelength is a kilometer or something on the surface. So that's a that's a crucial point about the group velocity. How do you spell tsunami? Good. So that is our surface waves. And there's a really nice generalization of this problem that I'm going to put as a recommended homework problem. I think you'll enjoy it. What we're going to do, and I'll put an intermediate step or two on there because it's already been erased. What we're going to do is the same problem with a, with a uh, layer of water of depth H, a finite uh, layer of water. And then we'll just solve it the same way we did. So let's, uh, yeah. We can actually keep that picture there. It's good to have.
again on the surface as before, but now it's a, it's a layer of water of thickness H. Of water of depth H. So now we have the following. Let's go ahead and set it up this way. Let's look at our X and our Z. But here at Z equals minus H, this is, this is Z equals zero, is the surface. Same as before, but at Z equals minus H, there's the finite depth. And our goal is to find uh, omega K. And once you have that, you can do d omega dk is the group velocity. So I'll just remind you of what we need to do there. Yeah. So we already set this up. Remember we, we have found phi of x z and t, we have this f0 e to the kz plus f1 e to the minus kz. This time we have to keep both of those, okay, because we're going down to a finite depth. Cosine omega t, no, kx minus omega t. And we need another condition for this. We have V sub Z equals D phi D Z is gonna equal zero at Z equals minus H. And y'all even show you what you get here. This will lead to omega squared is equal to we have here G K G K hyperbolic hyperbolic tangent. So it's hyperbolic tangent of K H. Is that what we have? Yes. Good. So this is what you'll get, and what you want to do then, so yeah, you'll see when you set this thing up, I think you can turn this into a hyperbolic cosine, that type of thing, okay? So, but yeah, this is what you'll get at the end, and this is worth discussing right now, because of our limiting cases. When H goes to infinity, so when this tank, or, or whatever it is, right, is arbitrarily great depth. When h goes to infinity, the hyperbolic tangent just goes to 1. Okay. And then you get back what we had. Do we have it up there still? No, we don't. Yeah, but what we had is just gk. Okay, maybe square is gk. And in the short, on the shallow depth case, you, you actually get something interesting because you're going to get the linear approximation to hyperbolic tangent is k times h, so you're going to have omega squared uh, proportional to k squared, which is the normal linear type of wave that is uh, where the speed is independent of k. Okay, okay so I'm just going to put these as notes, but you'll find this to be a, a great little exercise, so limit H goes to infinity, omega squared proportional to K, which is what we just saw. Limit, or, yeah. You know, it may, instead of saying about the limit, let's just say KH much greater than one. That's enough, right, for the argument, hyperbolic tangent. KH much greater than one, then 
this essentially turns into a one and we have this GK here. If KH is much less than one, then you just got the linear approximation here. Omega squared is proportional to K squared. Right? Then omega is proportional to K. The derivative for the group velocity is just a constant, is independent of the wavelength. So those two limiting cases are very interesting. It's the, um, the really rapidly moving tsunami has this dependence. The shallow tank has uh, this dependence right here. Okay, I'm going to consult the clock. Good. There are other things to say about this, but we'll go ahead and leave it right here. It's a great application. Gravity waves. Um, we did this one. You guys do this one. Um, I'll just mention what can also be shown. What can also be shown is that based on, say, this solution or the one we had before, it can be shown that the individual water particles are moving in little clockwise circles that decay. Um, the amplitude of the circles decays as you go down to greater depths. That's kind of an interesting fact. You know, in, in first approximation, we just think that it's an up and down motion, there's a little circular motion involved. But good, we'll leave that there, right, right there. That, those are your gravity waves, surface gravity waves. Okay. So there was an application of the potential uh, flow for which we didn't have to make any excuses about whether it's physical or not. That's a good one. Good, so what's next here, actually I'm gonna have to rewrite these equations. There's going to be another application of potential flows. We're gonna talk about sound waves. So in this case, the compressibility comes into play. So next, sound waves. Now, let's see. We're gonna start with Euler. In fact, we're going to use all three of these. So, d v d t, v dot grad equals minus one over rho gradient p. We're not going to be worrying about any kind of external field in this case. And then continuity. We'll have d rho d t plus divergence rho d equals zero. And I'm just going to write the entropy and we'll just write s is equal to constant. That'll actually come into play this time. So a sound wave, a propagation of some compression in the medium, in the medium means that rho is not constant. So here, rho is not constant, so we don't have the divergence of rho vanishing. However, we still will have, um, we still will have a potential flow. but we'll still have del squared p equals zero with v equals gradient of phi. 
And the reason is, is that we're going to be able to neglect this term right here, okay? Because we're taking small amplitude, remember oscillation, so because it's an oscillatory phenomenon, with small amplitude. However, we don't actually need this to, to bring out the wave nature of the wave equation out of these. So I'm just gonna start by expanding these things, linearizing them and proving that we have a wave equation. Okay, so let's see. Best way to tackle this. Um, we're going to strike these because small. Okay. So first, let P be equal to P zero plus P prime. So this is a constant pressure in the medium before the disturbance, and this is the pressure fluctuation due to the disturbance. P zero is constant, and we'll do the same thing for the density. Rho is equal to rho zero plus rho prime. So rho zero equals constant, rho prime, small, same here, P prime, small. Yeah, so we're going to linearize these equations, and we've already taken care of this, and I'll also note that V is already small. V is already a small quantity in these equations here. Now, linearize. the linearization here. So what we're linearizing is this Euler. We've got dv dp. Equals minus one over rho zero plus rho prime gradient of p zero plus P prime okay, equals minus one over rho zero plus rho prime. Gradient constant is zero plus gradient P prime. And if we were to do one more approximation, we'd say, did I say plus? This is just times. So one more level of approximation, we'd have minus one over rho naught gradient P prime. And then if we expand this out, let me just show you guys. So one over rho naught plus rho prime equals one over rho naught times one plus rho prime over rho naught equals one over rho naught, and this one divided by this expression in parentheses can be written as one minus rho prime over rho naught. Try that out sometime. If you don't remember these, you get these, you can just figure, invent all these with your Taylor expansion first, first order. This is a small quantity. So if I were to ask for the next 
I were to ask for the next term here, I would have a rho prime over rho naught times this gradient p prime, which would be second order small. So this is where I say plus second order small. So yeah, what do I, so I have d v dt equals minus one over rho naught gradient p prime. That's one of my linearized equations. That's the Euler equation. Now we'll do the same thing for the continuity equation. And we will have d dt rho naught plus rho prime equal to, or I can just write plus divergence of rho naught plus rho prime times v is equal to zero. So again, the only thing that's going to remain here is going to be rho naught divergence of v because the rho prime v is going to be second order small. So that's why we restrict ourselves to this one and we have d dt rho prime plus rho naught divergence of v is equal to zero. So those are our two linearized equations. Basically we plug one into the other and, we, and uh, we get something interesting. Um, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to consult here briefly. What we're going to do is this. We're just going to take um, the P D rho at constant S times rho prime is going to be equal to P prime. So what we're going to assume is that the pressure and the density are linearly related via this derivative here. So if you have P of rho, this is the first term in a, in a Taylor expansion. Right? So if P is a function of the density, then P equals P zero plus P prime P zero plus P P P rho uh, and the small quantity is the rho prime. And that's a thermodynamic derivative there that has to be taken at constant entropy. So that's where that comes in. P prime, P P D rho, rho prime. So we'll put a box around this too. And with this, these ingredients, we will get the ball. This can all be erased. Let's see which one goes into where, so. We'll do this now. So now, time. 
prime derivative of this equation right here, we get d squared dt squared of rho prime plus rho zero divergence of d v d t equals zero. Let's see where that takes us. d squared dt squared rho prime rho zero. The divergence of d v d t, that's the divergence of one over rho naught gradient t prime equals zero. So these rho naughts are going to cancel and this p prime is going to be dp d rho rho prime. So we end up with d squared dt squared of rho prime plus right, that's a constant divergence well, I'll go ahead divergence of the gradient of d p d rho at constant s times rho prime equals zero good we have it now. This is going to be a constant. It's going to come out, and then we're going to have the divergence of gradient, which is del squared of rho prime. So I'll go ahead and write this up here. d squared rho prime dt squared plus dt d rho evaluated at constant s del squared rho prime zero. So we've obtained the wave equation and this here is the wave speed squared. So c squared and uh, not speed of light, just the wave speed. We're, we're not using v because we have too many other v's here. So c squared is dp d rho constant s. That's the speed of sound. clearly a density wave, okay? So, you know, we have t squared dt squared rho prime equals c squared del squared rho prime. So, density wave, but the wave equation, let me consult the clock right now. Oh, that's pretty good. Let me just wrap this up. So what we've obtained is the wave equation. For the density, clearly we are therefore going to have the wave equation for the pressure because they're just linearly related. So we have the wave equation for the uh, density and the pressure. I have not yet cast this into the form of, of the potential, the velocity potential. So here's what I'm going to write next, and we'll do this next time. We're going to find d squared phi dt squared. We're going to get the same thing for the velocity potential. That's actually similar in uh, similar to what I just did up here, okay, to what I did right here. So that won't require many steps. That'll just require another step, but it'll be a good thing to pick up with next time. You don't have to have the velocity potential to talk about the basic properties of waves in a fluid. However, the velocity potential will make everything compact because we'll just have one expression from which we can get velocities, pressures, and everything else. Okay. 
and it will also allow us just to make contact with the general theory of the wave equation. It be the easiest way to do that because it's a scalar equation. So that's where we are right now. We've linearized, we found the wave equation, we found the wave spe the speed of sound. Um, it's this derivative here at constant entropy. So that's, we, I think we hadn't used constant entropy yet. Uh, but that's, you can say that's where it came in. That's where it came into play. Good, so we'll pick up with this next time. See you guys later.